Cristo Bolito, the Calypso Goat. a gem like isle discovered by the spaniards long ago it's the legendary island of puerto rico with swords and banners the conquerors came brought a sleepy island under their reign made a mighty fortress of iron and stone took this new world for their own now another explorers on the island today. Friendly travelers crowded Turquoise Bay. Instead of treasure, they search for fun. The gold of leisure in the tropical sun. Beyond the city lies the island green. Rich farmlands everywhere to be seen. Beauty and color to please the heart and a small conquistador with a peddler's cart. In truth, even this ragged peddler boy, whose name was Chago, might really be descended from the conquistadors. Hello there, caballo. You wanna buy an orange? Chago's business was only the selling of oranges, but just as the magnificent Pasofino horses of Puerto Rico are in the direct bloodlines of the noble steeds of Spain, so too the humblest of islanders or the wealthiest of ranch owners may be descended from the warriors that rode them. Hi, Chago. Hi, Mr. Rodriguez. You like uh, Cristobalito, eh? Cristobalito? He is named for Columbus. You know, he brought the Pasofinos to Puerto Rico more than 450 years ago. Ooh, he's beautiful. He's a beautiful Paso, senor. In about a year, I think he'll be the most beautiful on the island. His father was a grand champion. He'll make it too. Easy. You know, we can always use a good stable boy. How do you like to work here with the Pasos? Gee, thanks. But I got my pushcart. I gotta hurry now, or I'll miss the market. Adios, senor. Adios. Thanks again. It had been a good offer from the most successful horse breeder on the island. But Chago was successful, too. Left to take care of himself, almost from the time he could walk, he had begged borrowed and fought to survive until he had reached his present position of eminence as an independent businessman. But as in every business venture, there were certain problems, even to say risks. And later that afternoon, a crisis developed in the orange business. Hey, fruit peddler, we're from Caguas. Where's the gas station around? Del Valle and Cruz. Down that way. Come here. I don't see it. Show me. Right down that way. And around the corner. Get out of there. Hey, you. Get out of there. Hey, you guys. Put my oranges back. Give me my oranges, will you please? I have to pay for those things. Put my oranges back. Hey, man, what are you doing? Give me the key. Put the oranges back. This boy works for his living. Okay, fruit peddler. We might be around to see you again. Oof. Thanks, 
Mr. Rodriguez. Punks. Yeah, big punks. Have an orange. All right. No, no, senor. No charge. Hmm. Today. <laughs> Fair enough. Thanks. <laughs> that evening, by the sea, in the little shack Chago had scratched together, he went about his lonely chores. And as he worked, he thought of the motorcycle tubs and the hand-to-mouth life he lived in the streets. Then he thought of the kind offer he had from Senor Rodriguez. If he took it, it would be a big change, but maybe, too, a big chance. Wait a minute! What are you doing here? I changed my mind. I'm working for you. Oh, you are? Sure. I always start early. And uh, how much am I paying you? Five dollars and sixty-five cents a week and lunch. That's how much I make with my push card. Oh. Almost. And what's the sixty-five cents for? Expenses. Sugar for the horses. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so a whole new life began for Chago. And right from the start, he had eyes only for the Palomino named Cristobalito. But not only Chago's world was changing, for without knowing it, in the months that followed, he was changing the world of Senor Rodriguez, who had never had a family of his own. And a deep bond was being forged between the boy and the horse and the man. I think that's enough with the driving line now. Work him with the saddle sack a little. I could ride him. I know he'll let me. No, not yet. He's not ready. I'll let you know when, hmm? <laughs> Through the months, Chago and Cristobalito had become almost inseparable. In spite of what Senor Rodriguez had said, Chago knew he could ride the colt, and he saw no harm in trying to bring him along a little faster. At least, that's what he told himself. <sighs> well, how about that? Nothing to it. How about if I just sit on your back? It won't be riding if we just stand still and we don't go anywhere.
is a very bad tendon. One of the worst I have ever seen. All right, then. Get it over with. Put him out of his misery. Uh, are you sure? You can't keep giving him pain shots forever. I don't want him to suffer. Go ahead, I'll be in the office. are gone. How long will the pain shot last? Maybe 24 hours. Uh, that'll give them a chance to go a long way. Come on, Ramon. We got to find them. They must have gone through the back pasture. We better hurry or we lose them in the hills. that way. Doctor, come with me. Agonized and bewildered, Chago's only thought was to take Cristobalito as far away as possible. Almost instinctively, he began to move down the island toward the only family ties he had ever known. On the beach, far from San Juan, lay the primitive village of Media Villa. Chago knew his family had come from this place, but he himself had never seen it. He knew the villagers would be very poor, but he also knew they would be good people. And here the greatness of the horse would be recognized and honored. Hey, you kids, come here a minute. Oh, the Senor Hernandez live here? Yes. Go on and find him. Ask him if we'll come and look at my horse who has been hurt. <laughs> Senor Hernandez? Yes. I'm one of the Urrutia kids. My uncle used to talk about you and Media Villa. What's your name, boy? Chago. 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 There have been so many Arutias. Well, no matter. That's a Paso Fino. Si. A very good one. Si. You found him? You're a poor boy, no? Well, then? He hurt his leg. They were going to kill him. Kill him? A horse like this is a great treasure. That's why I brought him here. Bring Mama Dolores, quick. Mama, quick. What happened, boy? There's a sick horse come to the village. What's the matter with him? He hurt his leg. All right. I'll take a look at him. Come on, gangway, gangway. Oh, baby, old mama's here now. Come on, let's see. Mm, that's it, all right. Easy, boy, easy. I know just what he needs. Go get me plantain leaves, big ones, bitter pocket weeds, rotten ripe mangoes, dead eel grass, and black mud. Come on, scatter! Now, first the mud. Mm -hmm. That's it. That will draw the swelling. Now, a ripe tomato spread it like that. Mm -hmm. And now the rotten mangoes to relax the tendon. Mm -hmm. Now, here. That's all right. Mm -hmm. Hot sauce. 
Mm, now the mustard. To warm the leg and ease the pain. All oh, this is gonna be good. There. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> That's it. And so the strange cure began. The simple remedies wouldn't have made much sense to a veterinarian, but they would be amply fortified with the potent medicines of love and care. The village people so kind and good made palm leaf shack of old driftwood so boy and horse can work and play. Living on the beach for many a day. Now the tin can alone clock starting to ring. Fish in the ocean pull a string. Sleepy boy got to jump and run to catch fresh breakfast, plenty good fun. the fish for sure, gonna fry him up for plat du jour. But first he show with pride the fish. Ah uh ah, -uh, the pony say to him, that not my dish. Now that leg must be rubbed both day and night. And in the meantime bandage tight. That boy never leave that horse's side. Dreaming of the day that he will ride inside of the island by the waterfall. Trees and ferns all growing tall. With love and care, we must confess, the pony's limp is growing less. Cristobalito, Cristobalito, Cristobalito is getting well. Cristobalito is getting well. In a surprisingly few weeks, the poultice did its part of the job. It had only been mustard and mud, but sometimes the old country remedies are the best. Now the leg was strong enough for careful exercise to take over. At last already for the swimming cure, but Pony, he is not so sure. He never been in ocean deep, but he trust the boy, so he took the leap. Soon they play in the water without no fear. Water working wonders, the cure is near. The legs they run just like on land, but the weight of the horse make no demand. On the beach most fine, Mother Nature gentle and kind. Lull them to sleep is really grand. The music of the wave sliding on the sand. So the long, lazy months passed, and suddenly one day, the villagers realized that Cristobalito was healed. Now it was time to begin his training. The Pasofino is directly descended from the stock brought to Puerto Rico by Columbus and has been developed and refined on the island ever since. Perfecting a Pasofino skate takes long weeks of patient training. And as the villagers worked with the horse, they also taught Chago the proud riding form of his ancestors. When he is shown, the Pasofino is judged primarily for the marvelous smoothness of his gait. It is a broken pace with the hind foot on each side striking the ground a split second before the front. This unique action produces a rhythm which is both unusual and exciting. Of course, the villagers couldn't afford a saddle and a bridle, but they more than made up for it with their hearts as they brought Cristobalito to the peak of condition. Oh, he's beautiful. 
Then one day it was done, and the horse was so beautifully trained that he gave them the idea for an awesome and daring plan. A plan? The Pasofino to us is a wonderful thing. Out of the past, we are poor now, but our fathers were Hidalgos. Yes, Hidalgos. Nobles and warriors. Cristobalito speaks to our proud Spanish blood. We could never own such an animal. But he has come to us, and we have made him well. Well, and strong. Now we want to enter him in the big show in San Juan, representing the village. We have earned the right. It'll never work. He'll be recognized the minute they see him. If someone throws away a broken chair, and someone picks it up from the dump and fixes it, Surely it belongs to the person who fixed it. It is the same with Cristobalito. No, it is not the same. But it is the second person's chair. I have one in my house right now. But this is not an old chair. It's a very valuable horse. But the principle is the same. Yeah, it's the same. You know the horse belongs to Rodriguez. And you know he will recognize right away. If someone finds a broken chair and fixes it, and then the owner wants it back. Does he not owe something to the person who fixed it? That is true. Then when you return this broken chair to Senor Rodriguez, you must ask him to let the horse represent our village in the show. I think he'll do it. Que vaya con Dios, Chago. Thank you, Senor, for everything. I've been worried sick. I went down to my old village, Media Villa. Media Villa? Never heard of it. It's um, way down the island. Why didn't you let me know? I was afraid. Well, uh, he looks fine. He is fine. The people in the village made him well. Watch. Job is here. Thank you, senor. But there is a condition. A condition? The people of the village, pure Cristobalito, not I. And when he enters the big show, they want him to represent them. Well, uh, I don't see why not. They certainly earn it. Oh, they'll be crazy of happiness. All right. You've got a condition. And now so have I. What is it, senor? The handlers will work with Cristobalito and you'll go to school. But he's already trained perfectly. Besides, we've been living together. He won't like it. That's the way it has to be, Chago. But... No, but... He's going to be a champion and he has to be handled like one. But I want you to be a champion too. And for that, you need school. School? So Chago's life took another new direction. And while he knew Senor Rodriguez was right about school, in the weeks that followed, it was impossible to concentrate on his studies.
for he also knew that Cristobalito would work for no one but him. to really work to bring him around. The show is only one week off. For Cristobalito, the next week was just another week without Chago. And by the eve of the All-Island Championship, Rodriguez was convinced that the Colt would not perform well. And even though he was entered, it would be best not to bring him. He knew very well how much this decision would mean to Chago. In fact, he hadn't been able to find the courage to even tell him about it. But Chago had given his word to the villagers that Cristobalito would be in the show. Cristobalito? Keeping that word suddenly became the most important thing in his life. So, once again, Chago took matters into his own hands. Only this time, he was not running away from trouble. He was riding straight into it. All units be on the lookout for a valuable Palomino show horse. A horse? It was taken by an exercise boy of Rodriguez Rancho. They are believed to be heading for the San Juan Fairgrounds. That's us. Let's go. Hiding a horse near the fairgrounds where the show was to be held would not be easy. But Chago had thought of the only possible place to stay for the night, the vast and intricate fortifications of El Morro. As a homeless boy of the streets, Chago had spent many hours exploring every corner of El Morro, and he knew exactly where to go. Far down on the lower levels was a deserted gun emplacement where not even the tourists came. Once it had held cannon, thundering defiance to warship and pirate alike. Now it held only one small boy who had given his word to his friends. When the sun came up on the most important day in the history of Media Villa, the villagers could hardly believe that their moment of glory was finally about to arrive. Well, in spite of a few differences of opinion, the whole village was on its way at last. But at that very moment, on a routine patrol, a sharp-eyed policeman noticed some very unroutine hoof prints. There is no horse around here. That must be the one we were looking for. Hey, the morrow. The kid is hiding in the morrow. Let's take a look. Chago, too, was getting an early start after a worried and uncomfortable night. He knew the police would still be looking for him, but he certainly didn't expect them in El Morro.
police were getting closer all the time, and Chago was sure they would soon hear Cristobalito. But he knew of one place where he could turn that to his advantage, a maze of echoing rooms and tunnels that led eventually to a doorway near the entrance. Did you hear something? Yeah, but where is it coming from? It's getting louder. I hear it now. There it is again. There he goes. We want to talk to you. Hey, you, stop. Hold it right there. Come on, come on, he's getting away. show for the Grand Championship of Puerto Rico, we have the presentation of the colors. Still no word from the police. Where can they be? Son malísimos y usted no sabe ni guiar ni Mira, para la guapa señor. esa. Yo hace 30 años que estoy ya. Aquí. 30 años y nunca nadie se había quejado de mí. 30 no, años, ya. ya. No sé... Señor Rodríguez. Yes. We are the elders of the village of Media Villa, and we have come to thank you for letting your great horse, Cristobalito, represent our village. He is not here. Not here? No. Not here? But, but Chago said... Chago has taken him from my ranch. And I'm worried sick. They both disappear. The police are looking now. I'm sorry, senor. <laughs> No matter how hard Chago tried, he couldn't shake the patrol car because he didn't dare risk running the horse on the slippery cobblestones. But the narrow streets were a hazard to the car too, and he was just managing to keep his distance. Chago and Cristobalito were out of the narrow streets now, and the boy was finally able to turn back toward the fairgrounds. But he was still a long way from losing the police. I'm 
now for the Grand Championship of the Island, introducing the first contestant for the final event, Andante, from the Rancho Flamboyant. Notice particularly in this event the amazing steadiness of the riders' heads. Playing in the shallow lagoons had been one thing, but surrounding the forbidden walls of El Morro were deep and treacherous waters, which had claimed the lives of many invaders. Chago and Cristobalito would have to swim completely past the huge fort before they could get ashore. Here, ladies and gentlemen, is the well-known contender, that incredibly smooth Pasofino Medianoche. Midnight, ladies and gentlemen, Medianoche is considered by many to be the favorite today. That concludes the entries for the last event, the grand finale. Since the Rodriguez entry, Cristobalito, who is listed in your program, is not here. you've done is wrong. I did not mean to do wrong, but that's when a misunderstanding about the agreement between us. It is possible. But I know you're a man of honor, so I have brought Cristobalito here. I see. I gave my word to the villagers. I am Chago Emilio Alvarez y Garcia de Urrutia, and I do not break my word. I'm sure of that. What I have done, I have done for my friends, and for Cristobalito. You can lose, you know. You have told me it's not winning or losing that matters. It is trying, but we will win. Correction, correction. Cristobalito, representing the village of Media Villa, is now ready and will compete for the Grand Championship. The judges will now require additional time to study the new entry. When the police finally found their way to the show ring, Rodriguez was quick to clear the boy of any charges. But Chago's biggest fight was still ahead, the show itself. The other horses, of course, were well rested and in the peak of condition. But Cristobalito was exhausted, and it was obvious.
He was capable of great grace and style, but he was not showing it. And his friends were worried that he had given too much of himself just getting here. On the other hand, the smoothness of the great Medianoche had never been more perfect. Chago sensed the problem and tried to ease Cristobalito to give him time to rest and gather strength. But time was growing short, and it was apparent which way the judges were leaning. The villagers knew that only something sensational could save the day. So they prepared the traditional proof of the Pasofino smoothness used by the nobles of old. Cristobalito had rested enough now to show his true ability, or perhaps he sensed the tradition he'd been born to. Whatever the reason, he came to life. Suddenly, he and Chago turned the show into a real contest. Cristobalito has conquered the isle. You know, we suspicion he might all the time. And little Chago, too, won a world of his own. Instead of a pushcart, he got a home. Cristobalito. Cristobalito. Down the road, play it, man. Adios, senoritas. Adios. <laughs> 